What is up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. As you can see next to me, we've got the two legendaries, Palkia and Dialga. As last episode, we made it to Celestic Town and today we're going to kick things off by going through a little history lesson of the Sinnoh region. So let's step inside this cave right here. Of course, last episode, it was blocked by a Team Galactic Grunt, but we took quick care of him and met up with Cynthia's grandma. And now it's time for a nice story as we examine the cave painting. It says it's ancient, but honestly, I think the little kids from this village probably just drew it themselves because these are not very high quality drawings at all. There are three strange things forming a triangle. In the middle of them, a shining sphere. What is this all about? Like, for real? <laughs> Zelda or something? The cave painting reminds me of an old story. There existed a being so powerful, it was considered a deity at the time. Opposing this being were three Pokemon. The three kept balance with the one, as if they formed a triangle. Wouldn't it be a square if there's like a fourth person involved? It's an ancient legend of Sinnoh that is still told to this day in Celestic Town. Oh yes, I found something useful. You should take these. No, I don't want your prescription, Grandma. You need to take that. This is serious. But no, she's going to give us TM95s, which I believe should be Surf. But of course, we're not going to be able to use these until we've beaten the next gym. But this should finally mean that we can actually take on Fantina back in Heart Home. So if you guys are excited for another gym coming right up, make sure to smash that like button. And I actually want to try to have two episodes out today for you since it's nice and Saturday. I don't know why I added nice in there. I just, I like Saturday, you know, it's my favorite day. It's the weekend. Although I think most people had off from school this week anyway because it was Thanksgiving at least in the States. I don't know if other uh, countries get the week off for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Wouldn't really make sense, because Thanksgiving, you know, as far as I know, is an American holiday. But anyway, hello! It's Chibi Cyrus! He has returned to grace us with his presence. Oh my goodness, what is this? First time that I've had a low battery on my controller for the whole series. That's unfortunate. There appears to have been an insignificant struggle here. Everyone should step back and view things from a bigger perspective. Yes, a bigger perspective, one that is on a universal scale. My name is Cyrus. What is up with that little cheeky smile? I seek the power to create a new world, a world without strife. I'm getting some Stranger Danger vibes right now from this guy. However, that power seems to be unavailable here. We've met before, yes. It was at Mount Coronet. If you discover any power derived from the legends of Sinnoh, please inform me. He didn't even say please, actually. I just added that in to be nice. For that power is what I need to create my new world. And he's gone. That guy is so weird. Like, who just walks up to a little kid and says all that? Even if it was an adult, I'd be hella confused, dude. Like, what is up with this Chibi Cyrus, dude? Anyway, uh, that's it for the fairy tales of Sinnoh. Definitely a little reminiscent of Zelda with the whole Triforce thing or the triangle, but of course it is referring to the legendary pixies, as I like to call them. Mesprit, Azelf, and Yuxi. I don't remember what their official name is, actually. I totally forgot. I guess it's just the late guardians, but legendary pixies sounds way better. Like, come on, you gotta admit, legendary pixies goes hard. <laughs> Okay, not exactly hard is not the word I would describe it with. But uh, in this little shop here, you can actually buy apparently Dusk and Quick Balls. Did not know that. Uh, but that's not what we came here for. There is actually a man with some nice stylish glasses. And he will actually give you his very glasses. How would you like to change the look? How the world of your Pokemon looks? Yeah, why not, dude? A little bit too many words for me to really read that. But we get the wise glasses. And he will actually give you different glasses depending on the time of day, which is why he's hinting there at night. You can reflect on what you've learned with the wise glasses. So I believe during the day, he'll give you the black glasses. And in the mornings, he will give you the choice specs, which are like a very, very good item to get for any Pokemon that uses special attack. So definitely come back at the different times of day to get all three glasses from this guy. Now, grandma over here actually sells some things too. Oh, she's just got like general items, I guess. Old man definitely got the better stock with those Pokeballs. Quick Balls and Dust Balls are the best around and nothing's ever gonna bring them down. Except maybe a Master Ball, but 
especially in the Grand Underground because it's all just a giant cave system and dust balls of course work best at nighttime or inside of caves. And even though it is nighttime right now when I'm recording this, it's not always going to be night in the game. So for those situations, Quick Balls are your best friend. Well, actually Quick Balls are your best friend in any situation because they work best on the first turn of a Pokemon battle. Obviously not against trainers, but like, let's just say that uh, this Noctowl here I wanted to catch, I would definitely toss a Quick Ball right off the bat. And I don't even know why the heck I'm actually fighting this thing with our Krogunk, who we just caught last episode, but thankfully it went for Sky Attack. You could have done anything else, literally any other flying move, Noctowl, and I would have been quaking, but it went for a two-turn move, so we can easily swap out to Float Soul. And uh, you might notice that I don't have my main party today. As I've read in the comments, you guys have been saying that uh, my Pokemon are getting a little bit over-leveled right now. And that's the last thing we want, especially since we're going to be taking on Fantina today. I don't want to be like super above her strongest Pokemon, which I believe is 36. And uh, yeah, my main team members were like at 38, almost getting to 40. So we don't want that. Uh, we're going to train up some different guys today. We got Krogunk in there, Pachi, the Cranny Dose, and of course, Glover, the Ambipom, who evolved last episode. Such a cool Pokemon. I just love the design with the two tails. It works so well with, like, you know, the original Apom, who had the one-handed tail. Now we got double the gloves, and uh, I'm just going to let this guy keep going with whatever he's doing. Wah, he startled me good! I think you'll understand what I was doing when you see the move contained here. TM77s. Double lucky seven. I like the number, but I don't know about the move. Say your opponent raises its defense. Your Pokemon can use Psych Up to get the same defense boost. Basically, you get the same status boost as the target. Oh, I don't think I ever actually knew. What the heck? How does this man not see us right now? <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll just walk right past him. But JK, I do want to fight him. Oh, this Bronzor's being an annoying little bugger, ain't he? Got us confused, won't even die to the thief, and now going for the gyro ball? Like, jeez. And he had the safeguard up. I don't even know what that does, actually, but come on, lucky duckies. Please, what is this? Gonna hurt ourselves again? And now you're going payback? Oh, okay. Well, we're not gonna die from it, but like, come on, dude. Ambipalm's like dozing off right now. We need a little bit more excitement. There we go. Finally, we break out the confusion and knock that dude out. Little Indiana Jones wannabe. And speaking of wannabes, we got a little Naruto wannabe over here. Don't think I didn't see that little patch of dirt, bro. I should have probably healed up my Pokemon, though. The curse is back of Munch always forgetting to heal up. But at least it's a Skorupi, which actually... Krogon can't really do too much about. This little guy's at level 27, I think? So let's see if Pachi can actually handle it. Right now, it just keeps honing its little claws, so that's actually not good, because he's got two attack raises. Uh, as long as he doesn't have anything super effective, though, we should be okay. With the Rock Tomb, just one-shots it! Okay, Pachi! Critical hit, too? I like it, dude. Even though we're at level 25, like, I've been totally forgetting to train up Pachi the Cranny Dose. Because even though I kind of wanted to use it on my team, like, when we first hatched it, or unfossilized it? Revived it. That's the word. You, you revive the fossils. At least I think that's how they usually refer to it. The point is, when we got Pachi, I did actually think about uh, keeping it on the main team, but I don't know. I've just been... Having a little too much fun with all our other Pokemon and sort of left him in the box just uh, molding. But we've got him back now, uh, so we might as well get him in on the action. Let's uh, cut this tree. I think there should be one more trainer before we head back to Heart Home for that gym battle. Oh, the Krogunk v Krogunk, and we're on top, baby! Sucker Punch fails for you this time, and we hit the Swagger, which is actually not... Uh, great, because now if it actually does hit us, then, you know, he's going to hurt a lot more. But I'm hoping that the duckies will be on our side instead, and it'll hurt itself in confusion even more, because the higher your attack, 
the more damage you do to yourself with the confusion. So since we use Swagger and raise his attack stat, basically means you're dead, homie. Now before we leave Celestic Town, I got a little quick tip for you. If you go down into the underground, you can actually reach one of the best areas of the Grand Underground for the first time here in Celestic Town. So we're gonna save our adventure real quick and head down into the underground. And as you'll see, we are actually in the very middle of this whole place where you can find a whole bunch of awesome Pokemon in that big middle square. Well, I guess we'll show it off in just a second when we get there. But, uh, okay, I can't help myself. I'm gonna spoil it. It's, it's the Star Game Gleam Cave. I can't even say it properly, but this is where you can find a whole bunch of fairy and ghost type Pokemon. And also a lot of Psychic, apparently. The first two we've seen there are Metatite and Giraffarig. And a Chingling. Okay, I guess there ain't no fairies at all in here today. We just got a whole bunch of, uh, Psychics. Oh my goodness, what is this? And a Bronzor too? It's literally all Psychic Pokemon. Of course, if you leave and re-enter the cave, all those Pokemon spawns will change. But I actually want to go check out this cave up here because I think this should be the one that's real special. And yes, this is going to be our first instance that we see an Icy Cave. So you can actually get yourself some Ice-type Pokemon very early in the game, as well as a Deep Sea Scale, apparently in case you want to evolve a Gorobis, if you can find a Clam Pearl, that is, because I've never freaking seen a Clam Pearl in this game, so I don't know. But I'm going to try to keep going in and out, because I don't know if there are actually any ice Pokemon that spawn already, or if you have to wait until later on when we've been to Snowpoint City. I feel that we should at least be able to find Snow Runt, but so far... I am having no luck, it's just Bronzors and Bunaries. But if you're playing Pokemon Shining Pearl, you should also be able to find Teddy Ursa in here. I just want to prove that there's at least like one Ice type in here, dude. Ooh, there is a Smoochum though, which I think you can also find in the Fairy Cave. But, you know, that's an Ice type you could have gotten even earlier in the game, I suppose. <gasps> Yo, there it is! Little Snow Runt, yes! I knew you were in here, buddy! I love Snow Run, dude. It's so cute. I'm not actually going to catch one. I just wanted to show you guys that you can get an ice type. It is a female Snow Run, though. So I kind of am tempted to catch it now just because, I don't know, Frostlass could potentially be a team member for us. Since it was technically first in the Platinum decks, I guess we can't even register it. But we will give it a nickname, and that will be Yukina, the Ice Princess. I know you like that Yu Yu Hakusho reference. Feels good after all that training, we finally get to go take on another gym. Come on, keep up, Glover. Actually, before we head in there, uh, we did pick up the TM for Shadow Ball last episode, and I definitely want to teach that over to our Ambipom. Uh, so there it is. Dang, our special attack is not looking that great. Like, I don't know why I thought Ambipom would have some decent special attack. Apparently not. Unless we first teach it Nasty Plot, then that would be a pretty devastating combo. Nasty Plot into Shadow Ball? I mean, it might work out. This is either a horrible idea or a stroke of genius, and I guess there's only one way to find out, so we're getting that Shadow Ball. And it's time for the Ghost Gym of Sinnoh. I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda nervous because obviously we don't have our super duper team of all-stars right now. But, uh, you know, once we get to the gym leader, we'll definitely bring back the main squad. This is just for the trainers, and trust me, there's a lot of trainers in here. Actually, I forgot, but, uh, this gym, I really don't like the puzzle because it involves math. What's 3 plus 5 plus 7? I don't know, I want to say 21, but that's not even an option. Uh, 3 and 5 is 8, and then 15. So that would be the right door, but I want to fight all the trainers. So basically, if you answer incorrectly, you'll have to face one of Fantina's trainers. Oh, you threw the quiz so you get to battle with me, right? Hey, at least she knows. There's no way I would really get that question wrong. I don't feel that dumb anymore. <laughs> we got last Molly in here, but oh my goodness. More importantly, look at this battle background. 
That's so pretty. I don't usually use that word, but I don't know how else to describe it. It just looks so elegant with like the glass panes and that like kind of mosaic style. Is that what you call it? Glass mosaic? There might be some other name for it too, but either way, uh, we've been mean looked so we can no longer escape. And that really sucks because, you know, it went for confused right now. So uh, we're probably gonna hurt ourselves, right? Oh, no, we got the poison jab off, but it's not very effective against Ghost. I just really want to use that sucker punch, but uh, it's not letting us. And now it's going for Nasty Plot. Oh, this is not good. So with the mean look, we actually can't escape. And I mean, obviously you can't run away from a trainer battle anyway, but you can't switch out to another Pokemon either, which is just not very fun. And now with the Nasty Plot, oh, hey, at least we get the poison off. But, I'm really scared that it's just gonna one-shot us with whatever ghost move it goes for eventually. Here comes the Shadow Ball, and it moves very slowly! Oh no! No! I knew it was gonna Shadow Ball after that nasty plot and everything. I totally could've just sucker punched it, but it's too late now. We just gotta hope that Glover is faster, and at least he is, so there we go. No item to steal, just my heart to be stolen for poor Ricola in her first battle. That's not good. Not off to the best of starts here in uh, Brilliant Diamond and Pearl. Actually, before we do this, I'm, I'm just gonna heal. I'm sure whoever's next up won't be quite as annoying. Oh, it's just a little kid. Yeah, come on. We can do this. I believe in the Krogug. We got the whole city of Pastoria behind us. That seems to be their mascot. I don't know if I showed that off, but like in the Pokemon, they actually have a little wooden statue of Krogunk, which is kind of cute. In Plodum, they also have the cardboard stand-up, which is way cooler, but for some reason that's not in this game. So are you kidding me? We're going to go through the same thing again? Oh man, I might as well just swagger it. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Hey, at least it didn't confuse us, but it is going to paralyze us. And, uh, Poison Jab's still not very effective against Ghastly here. But as long as it goes for another Lick, which, uh, for some reason I don't think it will. There we go, finally we hit a Sucker Punch. Yeah, one on the board for Ricola! I love it. Not that much experience though. But next up, Donnie's got a Haunter. And as long as we just don't get fully paralyzed and it actually goes for an attack, which it does, uh, nice! We can actually one-shot! So that Misdreavious totally would have died too if we did Sucker Punch it. Or well, if it wasn't being so annoying with the non-damaging moves. Because if you don't know, Sucker Punch only works if the enemy uses an actual attack. And wait a minute, are you serious? I was not expecting this! Level 37 is when you evolve? I thought it was like 39 or 40, but okay, all Ricola needed was one level, and now, we've got the Toxic Rogue! Now the name is really fitting, cause Ricola is a brand of cough drops, and this guy, or gal actually, is the Toxic Mouth Pokemon, could definitely use some cough drops. Doesn't learn any new attacks though from evolving, that's kinda weird. Usually Pokemon learn something, like right when they evolve, but I guess not Toxic Rogue. Correct! Congratulations! Yeah, we totally got the answer right. Right? Uh, and we've got more math coming up. Don't you love some cool math games? What is 12 plus 28? That would be 40. So the middle door will be the correct answer, but of course I want to face all the trainers first. So behind door number left, we've got a little camper. Door number left, you know what I meant. <laughs> we got Camper Drew with three Pokemon. And I think I've actually run out of Sucker Punch, which uh, is gonna make this a little bit more annoying. But now that we're a Toxic Croak, yo, that cry though, geez, that was a lot. Uh, but yeah, now that we're Toxic Croak, I think we should be doing some more damage with the Poison Jab, especially considering Ghastly went with the curse, dropping its health down to half. So maybe we'll just finish it off with this, and we do, very nice. I like that. Our attack must be a lot higher now that we're Toxic Rope. 
So we can just one shot with that. But we are cursed, so we're gonna get that nail right in the head. What the heck? It happened again! Why is this a thing? <laughs> the camera just got stuck on Croxicroak. This is so awkward. Okay, I mean, I'm gonna switch because I don't have any more Sucker Punches, like I said, and I'm gonna switch because I believe the curse persists even if the original Ghastly that cursed us is dead. I don't want to keep getting nails in my head. That doesn't sound fun. Unless we're talking like some kind of piercing. That's the only time I'll allow any nails anywhere near my head. I don't think I would ever get a piercing, actually. If you guys don't know, I have one tattoo that I actually did a video about, uh, so you can check that out at the end of this one. I'll like link it if I can remember, but I don't know why. I've never really been into or thought about getting any piercings like on my ear or anywhere else really on my body, except maybe a belly button piercing. That'd be kind of sexy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Even though belly dancing is pretty nice. Shakira, Shakira, hips don't lie, and neither does that belly button ring. But anyway, uh, I just don't think I would get one personally. Uh, but it is pretty common as well with Puerto Rican guys, like they would get the one on the eyebrow. I don't know, that seems painful, dude. Honestly, all rings seem kind of painful, which is why I probably wouldn't get one, but then again, I got a tattoo and that was freaking painful. So again, check that video out if you, uh, have ever thought about getting a tattoo or just want to see what mine is because I freaking love it dude. I've never regretted it even though it's only been like a year but I don't think I ever will regret it. I waited a darn long time to get it that's for sure but it was well worth it like the artist that did it is amazing. Shout out to Neil like the man knows his craft not just in tattoos but he's also kind of a super nerd like he was so into Pokemon which made the whole experience of getting the tat so much better and just uh, not awkward. Like, I thought because it was such a big tattoo, I was going to have to like, I don't know, kind of get out of my shell of not being able to talk to people. When I'm in person with someone that I don't know, like, it's pretty weird making that first small talk. But not with Neil. 3 times 13, that should be 39? Yeah, because 3 times 3 is 9, so the number has to end in 9. And the only option was 39, so that's got to be it. But of course, we're going to take on the two trainers on the middle and right first. Starting off with this little school kid. What are you even doing in here, bro? It's past your bedtime. You like your spooky ghosts? Is that what it is? You like reading ghost stories? Because I got a good ghost story for you. Not a personal one. I've actually never had any experiences with ghosts, but I've always wanted to. Uh, the only thing creepy that really ever happened to me was when I went to a supposedly haunted cemetery. I mean, I was with a group of people and I personally didn't see anything, but apparently some people in that group, like I think it was like two girls and this guy that were off by a certain tombstone that's supposed to be the really haunted one. One of them, one of the girls, I think, felt like something touch her shoulder and she freaking screamed so loud that it freaked me out. <laughs> like, that's the thing, dude. I don't know if I fully believe in ghosts, but like I said, I want to experience it one day, but I'm also pretty afraid that if I do experience something, then I'm actually just going to be terrified of everything. Like, I used to have a pretty big fear of the dark when I was younger. I wouldn't be able to like leave my room at night to go get water or go to the bathroom to the point where I'm pretty sure I would like just pee myself because I didn't want to leave the room because <laughs> I was too scared to go to the bathroom. A little embarrassing, I know, but uh, I'm curious if you guys have any interesting ghost stories. Have you ever had any supernatural experiences or do you believe in ghosts in general? Because that's always a question I love asking people. And especially recently, uh, I've been watching a lot of like ghost shows with my fiance. Like there's specifically one called Unsolved on YouTube. And it actually kind of inspired my video for Halloween where I covered the creepiest moments in Pokemon. I try to like capture their vibe where they explain the history of the haunting before actually going to the place. Like, it's not your typical ghost hunting show. Honestly, I don't really like ghost hunting shows, but they make it funny, which is why I kind of like it. 
And it's weird because it's BuzzFeed. Like, I do not like BuzzFeed at all. But it's maybe like the one good thing that they've made. The guys on that BuzzFeed Unsolved, I like their personalities. And they make the whole ghost hunting thing like really fun. Cracking jokes and I think the fact that one of them is a believer and the other one isn't is what makes it fun. There's like that dynamic of like one believes in it, the other one is totally a skeptic and it makes for some really funny moments. But of course, on the left, we're going to have an ace trainer, actually. Okay, this guy might actually be a little tougher than the rest of the trainers we fought so far. Or he could just have another ghastly. As well as a haunter, which is a good time to test out our shadow ball. Absolutely destroys it, despite us not having the craziest of special attacks. So maybe that's a good sign. Oh, geez, wait a minute. You've got a Gengar, too, at level 30. Okay, this is the real test right here. Let's see how much damage we do without any nasty plots. As the Shadow Ball slowly traverses and actually doesn't one-shot it. The HP bar went down so quick that I thought it was just going to one-shot it, but nope. Not quite able to, unfortunately. And we do get poison, but it's okay because we're faster, so we can wrap things up with a Thief. And yeah, I'm getting a little nervous now, thinking about Fantina coming up. Because I don't think you can actually change your Pokemon. Like, you can't go into the PC boxes system from inside of a gym. So we're gonna have to walk all the way out and do this stupid math puzzle again, which is really annoying. Unless there's, uh, wait a minute, what? Pachi's learning Swords Dance, okay. I mean, that might be another option then against Fantina, if not Glover. But then again, it's at level 28. So I don't know if uh, Pachi's really quite ready for a gym leader battle yet. I, I almost want to risk it. Like, I know we got totally humbled against Maylene, but I want to see if somehow we can pull it off with just Glover at like, well, right now, half health. Uh, we're obviously going to heal up at least. Not at the Pokemon Center, but... I'll, like, use up some items and get him tipped off, or topped off, I mean. Uh, there's actually another Ace Trainer behind door number two with a Mistrevis. Okay, we do at least have Toots, actually. I think we should be fine. We've got three Pokemon at level 38, and two of them have super effective moves. Actually, three of them do, because we have Krogunk as well that I almost forgot about. Uh, so technically, we have four Pokemon that are... Pretty dang strong, and Fantina only has three, I think, in total. So I think we'll be fine, right? Okay, we're definitely not fine right now. Getting hurt in confusion, and now the rooms are a-twisting, which means basically if a Pokemon would normally be slower, it's going to be faster, and somehow Toots was actually slower than Mistrevis. Okay, I mean, works out in the end. We get past the Confuseray. And, uh, we got one more Pokemon, a Drifblim! Yo, okay! Another little practice run for Fantina, because I believe this is actually her ace Pokemon. So we got a little trial here. I don't know if she's gonna have Minimize, per se, but that is definitely annoying. Gonna raise the evasiveness, but we still hit through it with that bite. And, uh, not quite gonna finish it, but we can always go Aqua Jet. And even though Trick Room is going on, which makes slower Pokemon faster, I think it does not affect priority, since the Aqua Jet still went first there. And man, Toxic Croak was so close to hitting 38. Like, come on, we couldn't get like a little tiny smidge of extra experience. You could have just like sneezed on it and Toxic Croak would have leveled up. I don't know exactly how a sneeze gives XP, but here she is, Fantina, the fabulous French female who leads the Heart Home Gym. We should actually give our Pokemon some held items, and we did just get the Wise Glasses, so those are definitely going on Glover. Do we have, uh, well, we don't have Black Glasses yet, uh, but we do have the Spooky Plate, actually. Uh, no Dark Plate, though. I was hoping to power up the Dark Moves from either Toots or Ricola. But speaking of Ricola, we did run out of Sucker Punches, so let me go grab a Lepa Berry, and we'll get that back up to full. Actually, we could make them just hold berries. Do we have anything for Confusion? Oh, the Person Berries, okay. I don't want to end up getting Confused Raid, and then that's like 
the end of our run, so we'll give both of these gals person berries and Glover the wise glasses, and I think we should be ready for Fantina! Ho 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 ho! Finally, you have arrived! Since I came to this region, I always try to learn new things. They hold contest shows in this city. I say to myself, and Finn, I will excel. That is why I dress this way. Cest une performance. Also, I study Pokemon very much. I have come to be gym leader. And uh, so it shall be that you challenge me. But I shall win. That is what the gym leader does, non? I love doing the French accent. It's like a little bit of a guilty pleasure of mine. Which is why I love the Galar region. Or, sorry, Kalos. Galar was definitely British. Uh, Kalos, based on France, was my favorite accent to totally butcher. But she is actually going to be starting off with the Drift Blim. Okay. No pulling the stops or whatever they say. Basically, she's kicking things off strong. And so we're going to do the same thing by going for our nasty plot. Which is going to sharply raise that special attack. And she's going to go for Strength Sap, which I think uh, heals you up and lowers your attack. Okay, not even special attack. <laughs> Little does Fantina know that this is a special Ambipom. So go Shadow Ball, and we're going to absolutely obliterate it. Let's go, Glover. That's what I like to see. That's a good start right there. Ricola is now going to hit 38, and Tooks 39, the highest Pokemon we've got. Since uh, Bonsai is chilling in the PC right now, I think he was at 38. So somehow Toots has now become our highest level. But out comes the Gengar now. And thankfully we are faster. I'm pretty sure we just one shot it. Yeah, okay, wow. Well, uh, looks like my strategy worked out. The plan came to fruition. The Nasty Plot Shadow Ball combo is too good. Oh heavens, what is this? My final Pokemon! Yeah, Fantina is quaking in those little heels right now. You can see it in her hair, dude. Those four big floofs are shaking like maracas. I don't got a good analogy. They look like kind of nuts or like a berry tree of some kind. And uh, I don't know why I decided to go for Thief. I guess I got a little cocky and now we're confused, which is just great. And we didn't even steal her item oh it's because we're holding an item duh hey we break through the confusion though so that's it fantina will be donezo completely swept by glover can't even get hit by those ghost moves so i'm guessing that's why she didn't even bother but man that actually worked out so much better than i was expecting you are fantastically strong i know why i have lost well at least you didn't surrender I am dumbfounded! So very, very strong! <laughs> I can't do it. You, your Pokemon, so strong! Your power is admirable. I shall honor it with this gym badge. No more French accent. Any French viewers out there, you have now been spared as we've got the Relic Badge. Okay, I couldn't help myself. One last time. Now we can use the move Surf outside of battle. These technical machines too. Yeah! Oh wait, does she actually give out Shadow Ball? She might. I don't honestly remember what move or TM she gives, but I hope it's Shadow Ball. Oh no, it's Shadow Claw. A very startling move it is. Hits turn critical hit often. I was hoping you'd also share who does your hair, but... Five badges. But you must not forget, there are many other trainers. Strong trainers too. There are many more in Sinnoh. Have patience. You must become stronger! What are you, Kanye West now? Harder, faster, and... Uh, there's another one, right? It's not just... Harder, better, faster, stronger... Which one did I forget? I don't know anymore. But yeah, we really do have to go out every single door that we came in. And the lifts too, like, imagine how annoying it would have been to go out and heal at the Pokemon Center. And then have to do all of this all over again and answer those gym questions like, geez, that's a little bit too annoying. Thankfully, Glover pulled through so we didn't have to... We're still not done. Oh my, I thought we were like out. But no, there's more. Okay, thank goodness. Finally, 
You've been the gym leader. There seems to be no end to how tough you're getting. At least that's how I see it. You do realize I say that to everyone. <laughs> I didn't, actually. I never talked to the... Whatever this guy is. The champ to be. Man. I never talked to him. After actually beating the gym leader, I don't think. And hey, we've got a nice surprise outside of the gym. Cynthia, once again. So glad to see you. You're not very easy to track down. My grandma told me about what took place in Celestic Town. Thanks for what you did by the ruins. All in a day's work. But Team Galactic, I thought they were just a bunch of eccentrics. You know, talking about how they're gonna make a new universe and all. And that weird way they dress too. I thought they were harmless. Oh dang, Chibi Cynthia's mad. It appears as if they're a lot more trouble than I thought. I mean, stealing and hoarding Pokemon? That's just plain wrong. By the way, did you find the ruins interesting at all? If you did, you may want to visit the library in Canalave City. They have some ancient books that you might find interesting. It may also be of help to the completion of your Pokedex. I think you ought to go there. Okay, bye bye for now. She says we're hard to track down, yet somehow the last like three cities we've been to, Cynthia seems to be right there with us. I'm calling a bit of a uh, stalker syndrome going on. I don't think that's a real thing. Like, I mean, yeah, there are stalkers, but stalker syndrome, probably not. Uh, but now that we've got the Surf HM, we can actually get quite a lot of items. And I'm going to actually dedicate the rest of the episode to just that. we got to go all the way past this uh, rock right here. And you'll notice that you can actually surf behind it. So come on, B-Barrel. Is this the first HM that B-Barrel is using for us? Because I know Cut and Rock Smash, it was Bidoof. But now the barrel will actually lead us to a TM for Giga Drain, which is very nice. Um, I don't feel like walking all the way back, so we're actually just going to be lazy and fly over to Heart Home, even though we were just there. I love how much I prepared for this gym, and then it ended up being so easy that like we didn't even need our Person Berries or any of that. But yeah, there's actually another surf spot that we can grab down to the south in Route 212, where the Pokemon Mansion was. Thankfully, we already fought all of these uh, patrolling officers here. We've made it to this little pond where you can see an item ball. And I believe it should be another TM, if I'm not mistaken. Hey, what the frick? Oh my goodness. Uh, that's... <laughs> at least it had a berry? I was so confused for a second, but no. It's actually going to be a Rose Incense, which you can use to breed Roselia into Badu or Rosary too. I don't know if it's both of them or just Roselia that breeds into it, but basically you can't breed a Badu normally. You actually have to make one of the parents, aka Roselia, hold that incense in order to breed a Badu. Otherwise, a Roselia will breed just another Roselia. But uh, apparently there's also some berries back here. Ooh, Lumberry! If I'm not mistaken, that's like one of the rarer ones. I mean, it's locked behind a little pond, so I would guess it's pretty rare. Recovers from any status condition. Ah, the jack of all trades. And then the tomato berry. I mean, not as crazy. We're probably eventually going to use those all for puffins. I do want to go back and try some Pokemon contests in the post game. Not right now, though. I'm not ready for that. But I am ready to collect some more items with our newly acquired surfing powers. And while we're here in Veilstone, actually, why don't we go back to the style shop? As much as I love the platinum outfit, I think it's time to switch things up before the next gym. So while we listen to this amazing music, let's see what else we can purchase. We got the Eevee jacket. Looks all right. Gengar jacket, not a fan. Cyber style was the one I definitely had my eyes on from the start. And then we've got the winter style, which I'm probably going to save for when we actually go to snow point in a little bit. Uh, we've also got the spring style and casual style. And finally, the leather jacket, which we can actually afford. But like, come on, dude, this outfit is so bad. I don't know who would buy this. By the way, you can actually press the plus button and check out the chibi version of the character. Oh, it doesn't look as bad in chibi, actually. <laughs> Now I'm like second guessing. I'm sorry if anybody likes this outfit, by the way. I didn't mean to be so mean, but you know what? I'm actually going to grab the spring style. I actually like the way it looks in Chibi. We look like a poor British kid from the 1960s. <laughs> Why was that description so 
oddly accurate or descriptive. I don't know about accurate, but we straight up look like Oliver Twist. Is that what it's called? Tiny Tim or something? Anyway, over here, we've got another little pond we can surf across to get ourselves a piece of candy. And we're going to fly our way to one last city, this time Pastoria, where I remember uh, there was a guy around that told us there's something in this lake. Or maybe he said there's just something hidden in the city. And I'm pretty sure he was referring to this little hideaway here, where we can get the Mystic Water, which will power up water moves if you make your Pokemon hold it. And I believe there's actually something else uh, down this way, or... Maybe not. But one thing I love about the customizing in this game is the icon for your bag actually changes depending on the outfit you're wearing. So now we've got a nice little black, I've always called it like the mailman's bag. Maybe it is a mail bag actually. Over here, we're gonna step into the waters and we've got this item, which I believe should be another TM for Poison Jab. I don't know how I remember that. Apparently, there is another item we can grab between these trees or somewhere around these trees. We've got a bottle of protein! Gonna get them gains, baby! But now, let's fly off to where this little flag is at, or at least to Jubilife to wrap up this episode because I believe I'm gonna save Canalave for the next one. As much as I would like to do two gym battles in one same episode, I feel like this one's going on for a bit long already, so... Uh, there's actually one last couple of surf spots. Or, well, I guess one couple doesn't make any sense. There are a couple of surf spots that we can check out in this route. First, uh, let's hop over here. HP up! What is up with all of these protein or vitamins? That's what they're called, right? Vitamin items in the uh, surfing spots? I don't know. But I feel like there might be something else down this way, too. Ooh! We do have an item ball and a very blurry building. I like the way that looks too, uh, but that's going to be the sea incense, which uh, I don't exactly know what Pokemon that's for, but if I had a guess, it would probably be, oh my goodness, our character popped up at the beginning there, which means that this Psyduck is actually a little special. It's going to have at least two maxed out IVs, which are basically better stats than usual. So probably worth catching with our little Tiny Tim ass looking hat. <laughs> I can't get over that. Like that's the best description I can offer is just like a poor kid from old school Britain. It's not just the hat either. It's the whole fit, like the long socks and the shorts. And I was going to nickname this Psyduck Seaman after our amazing Psyduck from Pokemon Heart Gold, but it's actually a female. So I guess you'll be just Seam. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. But as I was saying, I believe the sea incense could probably be to hatch a Azuril. That's the only baby water Pokemon I can think of. Even though Azuril technically isn't a water type, it's a normal fairy, as I learned a couple episodes ago. Uh, but there's one last surfing spot we can check out here in the Ravage Path. We actually rock smashed our way through here a while ago and got ourselves a TM for Rock Tomb, but now that we've got Surf, we can go even deeper into the cave. Let's keep going up the waterway. Uh, I guess we should have gone the other way too, but at least over here we will find ourselves the TM for Water Pulse. Another water move for our arsenal. Kind of sucks that those TMs you find lying around on the ground don't give more than one. And I'm curious if like maybe in the post game there's some way to buy more TMs. Like, for example, the Shadow Ball that we used on Ambipom. Are we ever going to be able to find another TM for Shadow Ball now, or is that it? And geez, that is a lot of rock smashable rocks there. Thankfully, no Geodudes come out of them in this game, or at least I've never encountered one yet. Here we're going to find yet another incense. Three incenses in one episode. That's kind of crazy. Uh, and I believe the luck incense will be to hatch a Hapini. I don't know what other Pokemon is really considered lucky. I'm pretty sure it's got to be Chansey. It's got something to do with being lucky. But that's going to wrap up this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. And in the next one, we will take on the Canalave City Gym. Smash that like button if you want to see it uploaded later tonight. And I will catch you then.